Hi guys and welcome back to Sleeve Saturday. You know, I love a bit of indie alternative rock and the Arctic Monkeys are up there with the best of them. Formed in 2002, they stand on the shoulders of giants of the genre like the Smiths and the Pixies of the 1980s, Blur and Pulp of the 1990s and stand toe to toe with their peers in the 2000s like the Libertines, the Killers and Arcade Fire. My favourite of theirs is a song I consider a masterpiece, Cornerstone, and in my opinion it's their best song. The track comes from their third album Humbug and was the second single released from the LP in November 2009 and I'm fascinated by it. The track is one of the most revered in the band's back catalogue, which is a testament to it considering it made bugger all impression in the charts at the time. But its lyrical content resonates as the song is told in the first person narrative, which takes you inside the mind of a man pining for his ex-lover and yearning for a time gone past. Writer and lead singer Alex Turner at this point in his career was what I see as a reluctant rock star. <laughs> He's a fascinating character because the more reserved he is, the more intriguing he actually becomes. With Cornerstone he evokes something we can all identify with when reminiscing on happy times. You know, sights, sounds and smells. With the sights the song shows the protagonist roam from pub to pub in his hometown, searching for his ex-lover. Take the name of the first two pubs he enters, the battleship, the rusty hook, images that display feuding and decay, proxy descriptions of a failed relationship. Tell me where's your hiding place? He then enters a third establishment, the Parrot's Beak. Parrots are known for repeating and it's just a hollow echo. The Parrot's Beak is the third location on a doomed quest, and at this point, the repetition is running weary. I thought I saw you in the battleship, but it was only a look like she was not. Musically, the song has genius moments. The Sonics overplayed to the Parrot's Beak lyric is brilliant. For me, it almost reminds me of a squawk. So, so clever. I thought I saw you in the Parrot's Beak. Messing with the smoke alarm. It was too loud for me to hear her speak. Each time he enters a new premises, he sees an oasis of his ex. So desperate his desire to relive the past upon realizing it isn't her, he asks, Can I call you her name? I know for me personally, I've always had a quote unquote type, so I get it on a small level, albeit I don't call my girlfriend by my ex's name. Politely, please, can I call you? The way the sensation of smell is elicited in this song is genius, if not a bit weird. We can all remember a lover's perfume or aftershave, so when he states, I smelt your scent on the seatbelt while in a taxi ride home, it's both mundane and powerful imagery that's summoned in your head. The little touches like the use of the word elongated to disguise the quickest path home to the driver is what elevates this song from what could be a cheesy number. And I By the time he hits the final pub and the song's title, Cornerstone, he's weary. I googled the word cornerstone and it says an important quality or feature on which a particular thing depends or is based. As he runs into his lover's sister and asks for a fourth time in the song, can I call you her name? My interpretation of this is that the sister has the qualities and features of the one he truly loves and at this point that's more than enough for him. As she replies, I'm really not supposed to but yes. You can call me anything you want. I long to hear the same song told from her perspective. Did she always fancy this guy and was secretly in love with him? Or is she too estranged from her sister and being with him brings her comfort? Who knows, but it's fascinating and I'll never tire of making sense of this track. Let me know in the comments what your interpretation of this gem actually is. Call me any